Hi everybody, this is Fantasia. Right now I'm chilling with Madame Noir. The definition of uh, is my new album. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I feel like at this point, after everything that I've been through and everything that I've touched and done and experienced, I'm every woman at this point. So I'm the definition of strength. You know, the definition of love, the definition of music, the destiny, like, whatever you want to put. I feel like at this point, I'm, I'm every woman. I'm the definition of a little bit of everything. And I put it into the album. It's totally different music. Totally different from everything else that I've done. That means for so long I have, when I say I'm not going to let anybody prostitute my gift, for so long I have listened to what everybody else wanted what everybody else thought was good. Uh, sing this type of music. You should wear this, this type of look. That means you're not allowing me to be who I am. I know what I want to sing. I know how I want to dress. That's an artist, right? I think I, I grew up respecting those artists who stood for what they wanted, like Prince, and then you got Erica Badu and Bilal, and those artists where they're like, this is who I am. Every day I'm, I might change. I want to dress like this or my song selection may change. I'm being who I am and, and, and I'm at that place where I have to do that or I don't want to do it at all. I wanted to embody James Brown and bring back that bluesy, gritty, gospel sound. Uh, lyrically, I'm basically talking about all the bad relationships that I were in when I thought that was, you know, I thought that was right, when really it really wasn't. I was still lonely, I was still missing something to now I'm sleeping with the one I love. When, when I sing it live, it's almost like a church song. You hear, I'm sleeping, people are like, woo! <laughs> But James Brown, whenever, now when I sing it, I started off with letting them know what inspired us to, to go that direction. So whenever you hear, it's amazing, well, it's still that record of like, good God Almighty. And so I wanted that feel, and lyrically, I knew that, I knew people could relate to that. Performing on Good Morning America, I'm thinking I'm going to go and I'm going to do Sleeping. Uh, but they requested for me to do I Made It, and I got tickled. A lot of people come up to me and say, you know where you're supposed to be, or why don't you do gospel, or this is my gospel. I always tell people that, how are we going to reach the people if we're always in the church? I know y'all say, I see you every Sunday, you sing on the choir, you, I know you, but how are we going to reach the people that are not in the church every Sunday? And so, I feel like this is my ministry, this is where God put me. And when they asked me to do, I made it. I got tickled because I said, okay, God, I see exactly what you're doing. When I'm performing on stage, there's a lot of things that's happening up there that I step from the mic because I don't know if people are going to understand it. It's the presence of the Holy Ghost, that's what I say. And I can't do what I do without Him. And so when I get out there, I'm a soulful singer. It means I feel everybody in the room. And I used to hate it. I used to hate that because I carried it and I wanted to help, and I wanted to do what I could. And so God says the only way you can help is through your music and through being honest. So when I go out on the stage, there's times where I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, because there was a time when it was all snatched away from me. And there was a time when I wasn't getting shows. And I know that I can't do what I do without him. Those people, so I get amazed now. When we did the Anthony Hamilton tour, we sold out every night. And I got so tickled by that. So every time I would look out and see those people or seeing them dance and having a good time, there's times where I make clap and I come back and I say, thank you, Lord. I will say when I started fasting, it, it didn't start off with being, you know, me, me saying I was ready for a relationship or I'm ready to get married. I just knew that I needed to let go of a lot of things. And so I married myself and I focused on me and how to love myself again, how to let go of all of the past hurt, not just relationships, but business, family, friends. I wanted to let go of that. I was asking God to send me a certain kind of man when he was ready, you know, in his timing. For so long, everything that I did was all me, like, rushing into things. And I always tell young girls that I feel like 
we rush into things, whether it was you, you lack love from a mother or a father, whatever the case may be, everybody that we get with is like, okay, I, he could be the one. This could be it. And so we rush into it and we don't give it time. So I asked God when he was ready to send me a strong man, a praying man, and a man that was gonna build me up because I was a broken woman. Uh, after coming off of After Midnight, I met my husband who was fasting at the same time. So for me, I was just like, wow, patience. I got married after three weeks. Meeting my husband, I knew he was the one. It was almost like everything that I was praying for was right in front of my face. And you have to watch that too, because the enemy can hear your prayers. <laughs> so he knows exactly what you're looking for. Um, I always tell people, before I came back out on the road, when I met Ken, we talked. It wasn't about sex, it wasn't about anything. He made me feel sexy without coming at me in that kind of way, or touching on me, or mm, ah, look at you. It was never about that. It almost got to a point where I was like, does he think I'm hot? He said, nothing yet. <laughs> but I was God saying, no, you, you, I, I'm sending you someone that it's not about any of this, it's about this. And somebody that can make you better and push you to being greater, all of your flaws and your insecurities and the things that you're weak at. I'm sending you someone to get you, you know, to push you there. And so before I got ready to leave his house, I got up and he had kneeled down. He said, can I cover you? So I was like, wait, say that again? He's like, I want to cover you. I want to pray for you before you got on the road. And I knew then that God had sent me the head of my house, my protector, um, the man that was for me. There's a song on my album called So Blue. And So Blue came about because I went back to that situation. I had just lost my grandmother. And I think at that time I was angry and he wasn't there when I wanted him to be there or quick enough when I wanted him to be there. So I went on social media and just put it out there and I'm upset and angry and he left for six months. So, um, you know, I always share my story. I'm always honest with people because we're human. And I think I came out the box honest because I don't want to wake up ever thinking, I don't want people to see this or that. then that's when it comes fake and, 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 and unhappy and I don't want to be that girl. So I share it through my music and when I sit down and talk. And he left six months, I went back and got my husband though. You see him. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for supporting Madame Noir's YouTube channel. For more Did Y'all See, click here. For celebrity interviews, click here. And for our new series, Ask a Black Man in Los Angeles, click here. And as always, subscribe.